Uh, good evening and welcome to this remote meeting of Wirral Planning Committee. My name is Stuart Kelly and I'm the Chair of the Committee. This meeting will be webcast and the record retained on the Council website. For those people at home who are viewing the webcast, I'd like to inform you that if you look above the meeting, you will see a resources tab. Select this and the link to the agenda will appear on the right hand side. This will then enable you to open the agenda report as PDF documents and follow the discussion and debate. My role is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly, having regards to procedure, behaviour and ethics, to explain who are with us online, planning officers, a highway engineer and an environmental health officer. They will present the applications and provide any technical advice that may be required. The council solicitor. She will give advice to the committee on procedural and legal matters that may arise. There is also the minute taker and, of course, IT support. The elected members will consider the applications and collectively make the decisions. Voting will be by roll call. Each application will be introduced by the planning officers. Where there is a qualifying petition of 25 signatures or more, I will invite a representative of the petitioners to address the committee for five minutes. I will then invite the applicants or their agent to address the committee for five minutes. Statutory and local consultees may also address the committee. A ward councillor can also address the committee. Once representations have been made and following any questions of clarification from the committee, the speaker may not participate in any debate that follows within the committee. The application will then be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee and we will then make a decision on the application. When making decisions, members may only have regard to material planning considerations. It's a matter for each member individually to balance these considerations and to decide what weight to give them. Members will also have regard to our local planning policies and to the national planning policy framework and guidance. A reminder for members. Keep your microphone muted and your camera off until called to speak. Ensure that the chat function is accessible to you. Indicate that you want to speak by typing your request into the chat function. Turn on your camera and microphone prior to speaking. Turn them off again when you have finished. When a vote is taken, the solicitor will call your name. We now need to just check all members are present and their equipment is working correctly. When I call your name, could you turn on your camera and then your microphone and confirm, please? So, start then with Councillor Bruce Berry. Yes, I'm here, present and correct. Uh, Andy Corkill. Present and correct. Okay, thanks. Uh, George Davis. George Davis. Okay, we've seen some of lost George uh, again. I'll move on Steve Fouts. Yes, Chair, everything's okay. Thanks, see you now. Uh, Samantha F Frost. Hi, uh, yeah, good evening, everything okay? Thank you. Steve Hayes. All present and correct, thank you. Thank you. Um, Kathy Hodson. Yes, I'm here, can you... Can you Yes, I'm here. Uh, all present and correct, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Brian Kelly. I oh, beg your pardon, Mary Jordan. <laughs> yes, here, Chair. Present and correct. Thanks a lot. Um, and now, uh, Brian Kelly. Yes, Chair. Present and all seems okay. Thank you. Um, and Leslie Rennie, deputising for Ian. Sorry, Chair. Yes, I'm here. Present and correct. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Paul Stewart? Yes, Chair. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Stuart Whittingham? 
Yeah, thanks, Joe. All present, correct. Okay, Stuart, just before you turn off your camera. <laughs> yes. Um, what was this proposal that you, you've typed? Yes, uh, it's in relation to Gender Rights and Five. Uh, you're given the importance of the project. Um, no one on in terms of introducing the first uh, new rules. Yeah, I, I was about to declare interest on that, so. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, can we, all right, so I'll bring you back in later, Stuart. Uh, then. Do you want okay. to finish okay. the bill call, call first? Yeah, and finally then I'll, I'll bring you back in later. Sorry, okay. Stuart. So those were something else. Um, and finally then Irene Williams. Yes, the president's incorrect. Thank you, Irene. Sorry for holding you up there. Um, oh, God, I'm confused. Um, Councillor Kelly, can you go back to George Davis? George Davis, thank you. George, are you there? Did have George, didn't we? George Davis. No. Um, is it possible for anybody to get contacted by phone? Or is that certainly no who's keen to contribute to items oh, third? Sure. He, he, George has just messaged saying that he's got a problem and he's asking for Bryn. Okay. Um, Bryn better phone him then, I suppose, or is that possible? And I'll, I'll, um, the, the protocol was that we would give about five minutes um, to this. I, I think I could probably fairly simply take the minutes and then listen to Stuart's proposal or maybe a can't Chair, if I may, uh, I've just been to George. Well, thank uh, you. And, and I, think, I think Bryn's in contact, but we, I think we, we've identified the problem. Okay. Um, so it should be here shortly. Okay. So if attendees, if we can wait a few moments then, and we'll, uh, we'll just wait for George to re-establish his connection. And then we'll, uh, we'll move into the minutes and the declaration of interest. Um and then we'll hear, I think, what Stuart wanted to ask us. This is on Agenda Item 5. Leslie, are you, are you, have you, Leslie? Leslie? Sorry, I do apologise, I'm having problems with my chat. Would it be admissible if when I want to speak I can uh, raise my hand and you will call me on that? Whatever, I'll try.
Okay. Is Brim able to update us on George? Oh. Okay, are we are we able to get an update on George or have we given it long enough? I think we at least need to move on to the minutes okay. chair and then um, we'll see if Councillor Davis comes in. Okay. Okay, well, let's do that then. Um, agenda item one then is the minutes, um, and to approve the accuracy of the minutes of the meeting held on the 26th of May um, 2020. Um, is there any issues? Members could write something. No, nope, then we will take them as uh, read and sent in due course. Um, agenda item two then, Members Code of Con.
applica- applicant's name is not that of Maisie Travel, but clearly has implications for Maisie Travel. I sit on the transport committee uh, to the city region and the metro mayor, which has associations with Mersey Travel, but is not Mersey Travel. However, I have long supported modernised the new modern trains and the infrastructure that is necessary uh, for them to take place. So, therefore, it may be conceived by members of the public that I have a prejudicial interest. So, I will declare a prejudicial interest and take no part in that debate. Uh, thanks a lot. Any further interests? No. Okay, uh, so Stuart wanted to say something about the agenda. Stuart, you may as well um, say what you wish to say now before we move yeah. into the agenda. Can I, can I come in now? Can I, or, yeah, or, I think or, so. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, given the importance of the, the whole uh, fleet renewal project, which, let's face it, is the first brand new trains for Wirral since the 1950s, uh, and the, obviously the difficulties in relation to COVID, and the difficulties that you know um, presents for you know various uh, bodies to to consult properly. Uh, my proposal <laughs> is that agenda item five be deferred to allow for further consultation with residents and ward councillors to take place. Uh, I move that as a as a as a resolution. Okay, let me Ch- I'll, 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 I'll post that up in the chat. I'm, ha- I'm happy to second that, Chair. Yeah. yeah, I think I think we need to, if that's going to be moved, I think it needs to be moved at the appropriate time with regard to that particular item rather than doing it out of, out of turn. So unless you're going to take that as the first item, Chair. Um, I... I... And then I think that there might be some guidance on, to be to be given on whether or not consultation is needed. So I think we need to deal that with that as part of the the item. Yes, I I, I think I think I agree. I, I think what 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 we'll do when we reach item five, I, I think um, I, I'm, I'm I'm thinking that we'll we'll take our, take the presentation and take the. Um, uh, take the presentations from the objector and the applicant, um, and then if we if we feel, having listened to the presentations, that there's a gap in in our knowledge, um, would would it then be appropriate to decide whether it needs to be deferred for further consultation? Um, what do you think about that, Stuart? So, chair, chair, so what what I picked up from the no, uh, you know, from various conversations and there's, you know, some of the correspondence I've seen, uh, there's been an issue around consultation. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think, you know, you know, you know given the opportunity uh, you know, for further consultation, I, I think it would be only, only a benefit uh, yeah. both for the, the ward councillors, local residents, uh, but also to the applicants as well, uh, and to the, the, the wider uh, general public who, uh, who are looking forward to a world-class uh, transport system. Yeah. Can I, can I just come in on that? Um, I, to be clear, this is this is consultation. This is not our consultation, is it? We we've done we've we've met our statutory duty in terms of the consultation that we need to carry out as the local planning authority. Uh, are you talking about um, sort of consultation that might have been um, engagement between the applicant and residents before the yeah yeah yeah, ab- ab- yeah. Ab- absolutely Matthew I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not suggesting that, uh, yeah. as a planning authority we've, we've not we've not um, so, sort of uh, discharged our statutory responsibilities this is this is purely for between the applicants and and the local community and ward yeah. councillors sure I, I think we need to deal with this at the appropriate time when we come to the consider because the there are. And, and Matthew may well deal with the requirements for consultation as part of his presentation. So I think we need to deal with it then, and not to preempt the um, the the discussion. Okay. Okay, we'll um, we'll, we'll pick that back up then when we reach agenda item five. I'm proposing to follow agenda order. We we have the same number of members of the public for each uh, each item. Um, so we'll um, the the items on the agenda um, 
if, 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 if questions of consultation um, uh, arise during the uh, during the discussion, uh, then we can um, we we can deal with them. Then um, is that okay? I, I think if members feel more consultation. Um, either by ourselves or by the applicant. The applicant may very well wish to comment. You may wish to question the applicants on on the consultation that has taken place. Um, and I think form of view, whether you think you know what they have done uh, from their own mouth is, is, is sufficient. Uh, I think at the moment they don't have a, any evidence. Uh, in fact, we haven't heard from the applicant. Um, who may wish to tell us what, what consultation has taken place and, and what response they've given um, as part of that consultation. I think that's the fair way of doing it. That seems to be my interpretation of the legal advice um, that, we've, uh, that we've just been given. Can we revisit it at Agenda Item 5 then? Yeah. Please, Stuart and Paul. Yeah, I think that's the appropriate way forward, Chair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Stuart. Yeah, yeah. I, th I, th I think as it's on the agenda, we'll um, we we'll begin our discussion. We'll hear from people, and if we feel that there's been it, there's, there's some sort of gap in our knowledge uh, that may or may not be linked to uh, conversation, then we'll take that down. Um, okay. Um, where is George Davis with us? Yes. He isn't, Chair. So. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do then. I will. I, I, I know that George wanted to uh, uh, to say a few things on Agenda Item 3, so I don't want to disenfranchise him. But I will move on, uh, and I'll move on to Agenda Item uh, Number 4, um, which is 8A Silverdale Road, um, uh, Oxton erection of a three-storey rear extension to form an enclosed stairwell. If the plan officer would introduce that report then, please. Sorry to interrupt you. Did Steve, Steve Fox didn't leave, did he? Let's see. Steve, are you Steve Fox? Is Steve Fox left? Yes, Chair, it looks like he has left for the wrong agenda item. I'll try and contact him. Yeah, can he be, can he be brought in? Yeah, we, we, we weren't moving to five. We were, um, yeah. we were discussing whether, uh, whether to, to uh, defer it early. Steve's back with us. Thanks, Thank Steve. Thank yeah, we'll, we, we'll, um, we'll, we'll take agenda item five last, um, is what we've uh, probably agreed on that. Um, in any case, we, we don't have George, so we're going to just skip Townfield because I know it impacts. Uh, he had something to say, so we'll start with agenda item number four, Silverdale Road, uh, Oxton. I've just invited Matthew to... Uh, Uh, yes, I can see them. Okay. So uh, this this is a planning application for the erection of a three-storey rear extension that will enclose a new stairwell access for the four apartments contained within this three-storey building. <laughs> the, ex the existing external staircase will be demolished. Uh, so the plan on the screen at the moment is the uh, they're the existing elevations, and this is the existing staircase um, that will be demolished. Um, and these are the proposed um, elevations, um, and this is the 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 main one, the rear elevation on the rear. So the proposed extension has been amended since it was first submitted. The originally proposed render has been deleted and replaced with brickwork to match the existing building 
and sash windows with head and sills matching existing window treatment have been added to the proposal. An existing single-storey lean-to at the rear will also be demolished as part of these proposals to improve the outlook from the bedroom window at the rear of the ground floor flat. The extension would measure just over 5 metres wide and would be 3.3 metres deep at a height of 9.8 metres. Given the height of the windows within the rear elevation, it is considered that sufficient outlook and natural light will still be afforded to the bedrooms on the rear elevation of these flats. It is not considered that the proposal will detrimentally impact on the amenity. I'm through to the meeting. Well, it was. I think I can hear George Davis in the background. Thank you. Anyway, I'm sorry. So it's not considered that the proposal will detrimentally impact on the immunity of neighbouring properties to such an extent that would warrant a refusal of planning permission. The extension is to the rear of the building, so would not be visible from the street scene. The building, whilst attractive, is neither listed nor in a conservation area, and the design has been amended to reflect the character of the existing property. There are other examples of enclosed stairwells such as this in the locality. The application is recommended for approval. There is a qualifying petition of objection in connection with this application. Okay, uh, thanks for that. So we have um, Mr. Hesketh, if you could uh, turn on your... Okay, hopefully you've got me. Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Will I be able to share any images or anything? I have some, if it's possible to. Um, I don't see why. Why not? Does technology it... looks like I can't, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm going to have to try and uh, draw some shapes Sorry. with my hands in the air. Then, okay. uh, we can change them to a presenter so that it will allow it, if you give me two seconds. Thank you. Okay, so while Bern's doing that, um, when he begins speaking, you will have sure. five minutes um, uh, to, to address us, um, after which I'll invite members of the committee to ask any questions, clarification they may have, um, and I'll give you a, a nod, as it were, when you have one minute um, uh, to go in your presentation. Great. Thanks very much. I can see, I can share. Thank you very much. I'm Francis Hesketh, the direct neighbour of the property. I'm speaking for 26 petitioners who object to this three-storey extension. It's a large Victorian semi divided into four flats. It's been badly neglected for decades, but still capable of restoration. As neighbours, we are supportive of proposals which would be sympathetic to the property, but this block is not right. We believe it's badly designed for three main reasons. Number one, it will permanently damage a Victorian house which has an unusual heritage, putting it beyond future restoration. Number two, reduce the quality of life and light for people who live in the flats. And number three, quality of the neighbourhood. It clearly needs a replacement fire escape. Uh, we don't dispute that. Uh, but there are ways of doing this that, for example, a modern metal fire escape, which wouldn't damage the fabric and would retain light. So it causes permanent damage to the Victorian house. I will now try and share a picture which is the rear elevation from a PowerPoint. So hopefully you've got that. Um, I'm just trusting you have because I can't tell you if you have or not. Um, so yeah, have, not, have that. Yep. you have, yeah. So it's not very attractive as you can see um, and clearly needs repair. You can see that the windows on the left which look out over the garden and on the right which also look out over the garden. Putting the three-storey extension into that would obviously punch out structural metal work and uh, take up a chunk of garden. Um, in terms of the quality of life for the flats, the next thing on your screen here shows the existing elevation on the left, which I've divided by the yellow lines showing the ground floor flat, two first floor flats and one second floor flat. And on the right is the elevation as would be. And um, so very briefly, on the left hand side as you look at the right picture, you'll see three windows. Now, they will all be very heavily shaded by the extension itself and by the, fact the, the aspect of the house to the north. 
They will look out along a sheer wall of brickwork, which has no relief and no detailing. And they have a, effectively a full, full garden view is shrunk down to one third. On the right hand side, similarly, they will look out along sheer brickwork. They will have a much restricted light and obviously, particularly for the ground floor flat, a smaller window. Now, that's a point I want to raise because those two windows at the ground floor flat is a double window, original features, um, and they get punched out and replaced by a smaller window. I'm going to show you something now which is a little bit unusual. You might be aware that the flat, ground floor flat, was occupied by a local outsider artist, Ron Gittins, who sadly passed away last year. Um, his niece has sent me this picture, which is the inside of uh, that room with the double windows. Uh, and that is the room as it is at present. It's a 360 degree picture. Now, whatever you think of the artwork, the point really is that the, the windows give a lot of light into that room. Um, if there is an attempt to keep the art heritage and the integrity of that would be destroyed by removing that window. My point really is the damage to light of that. And so really to, f to finish my point off, I'll unshare the screen now is in terms of the impact on ourselves as neighbours, we would see a three-storey height building with no detailing on the elevations we look at. Granted, it's been changed to red brick from mortar, which is a good thing, but um, the red-facing bricks wouldn't really match the texture and tone of the Victorian-era property. Um, and it is actually visible not just from all the properties to the rear, but in some views from Wellington Road as well. Uh, so it is view visible from the public arena as well. Um, in terms of sustainability, it's larger than it needs to be. It uses materials it doesn't need to use, and it destroys um, the potential for restoration of a Victorian property, which goes against sustainability and good design principles. Um, so for all those reasons, we believe that this application should be refused in its current form. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you for that. Just under five minutes. Thank you. Well done. Um, we don't have the applicant um, with us, so I'll um, I'll open open this up to members. The members wish to uh, to speak on this. No, no questions. No questions, Mr. Hester. Mr. Hester, thank you very much for your. Um, uh, presentation, and I'll Thank now you. open it up. I'll, I'll now open it up to the uh, committee for discussion. Any members wish to contribute? Steve, Fels. Yes, chair. Went uh, on a visit today to just reassure myself about the surrounding and and the types of properties there. There is some varied properties uh, in the area. However, I do have some sympathy with the um, the petitioner. However, I also have some sympathy with the people who occupy the flats at present. Um, I think they they warrant and deserve some sort of covered entry to their property, which the uh, seems to have put and some extra security. Um, the the strange issue about the the um, heritage of the room is is quite unique i'm trying to think what in ways of planning that that would be effective if it was at some point and it would be very nice to be open to the public then i'm sure some sort of internal item would be arranged so people could view what seems to be fairly beautiful artwork uh, my view is that in in planning terms and the officers have considered all the planning impl implications um, I would be very difficult to find uh, sustainable reasons for refusal but i accept it is on the border, uh, is it not, of the, the conservation area and uh, and has certain character in that area. But, however, there are other types of properties in the area with similar things and officers have referred to that. So it would be very difficult to sustain a, a reason for refusal in my mind. Uh, thanks for that, Steve. Uh, Steve Hayes. Thank you, Chair. Just a question for Matthew. Um, regarding the actual lovely artwork in that room and the lights and how it affects the, or how the extension would affect this, is that a material consideration at all? Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit confused because normally I would imagine it would be the 
the, the objector who would be seeing the visual effect, where in this particular case is the people who actually live at the property or, or share the property. Yeah, thank you through you, Chair. I mean, the impact on that artwork, it, it's not a listed building. As I said in the presentation, it's not, a it's not in a conservation area. It's not a museum that's open to the public. Um, you know, if there was any impact on the artwork in that room, it, it's nothing that you could take into consideration with this application. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, any, anybody, anybody else? No? Okay, yeah, I'm also very familiar with um, Silverdale, Road, Silverdale Road and the, the backs of the houses can be viewed from a number of vantage points in Wellington Road. Um, and a number of the houses uh, along that stretch there have already um, had this sort of development uh, enclosure of the uh, the entrance to the flats um, at the rear and a lot of these large uh, houses have been uh, converted um, uh, into flats. Uh, I don't think many actually get converted back into into the large houses uh, that they uh, clearly once were. Um, in in terms of the, the the artwork, I mean, looking at the photograph that's that's been supplied, um, most of the key pieces of artwork seem to be on the walls that that, that aren't don't form part of the uh, um, the window. Uh, the changes uh, to the window. Um, I agree with uh, with Steve. Uh, if, a plan, if a planning inspector came down and saw that you know the the the, the other the other uh, flats in the on the same side of the road, the neighbouring house the other way, uh, has exactly the same uh, style of uh, of enclosure. Um, they, they, they'd wonder what 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 really our grounds were for um, for refusing this. Uh, this um, this particular application. Um, if there's no further comments, then I'll I'll move the recommendation uh, to approve. Is is there a seconder? Yes, Chair. Happy to second that. Councillor okay. Bruce Barry. Okay. Thanks, Bruce. Um, Further that contributions, then I'll get us ready to vote. Uh, voting will be for, against or abstaining on the motion. The solicitor will call your name. Please turn on your mic, your camera and then your mic and say who you are before voting. Members should only cast a vote if they have heard the planning officer's presentation and the debate in relation to this matter in full and have not had any technical difficulties during this item. In the event that you have had problems here in the discussion, you should not vote and indicate not voting when called. And I'll hand over to the solicitor to conduct the vote. Thank you, Chair. Can I call on Councillor Bruce Berry? Thank you. Uh, yes, I've heard the full debate, so I'll be voting for. Thank you. Councillor Corkill? I vote for. Thank you. Councillor George Davis. Councillor George Davis, I have heard the poll and I will be voting for. Thank you. Councillor Fox. I'll get the, I'll get the hang of this one day. I'll be voting for Councillor Steve Fox. Councillor Frost. For. Thank you. Councillor Hayes. I've seen and heard the full debate and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Hodson. I've heard the full debate and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Jordan. Yeah, I've heard the full debate and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. Uh, Stuart Kelly, yes, I've heard the, the discussion I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Kenny. Four, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Leslie Venny. Yes, I've uh, listened to the full debate and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Stewart. I've heard the full debate. Uh, Councillor Stewart and I'll be voting for. 
Thank you. Councillor Whittingham. Councillor Whittingham, head of Thorpe Bates, I'm voting for. Thank you. And Councillor Williams. I've heard the full debate and I'm voting for... Thank you. That's unanimous, Chair. That concludes uh, uh, that item. That's been uh, approved. OK, if we can move now back to um, agenda item three, uh, Townfield Primary School, Townfield Lane, uh, Oxton. Um, and I invite Matthew to introduce uh, the report. Okay, thank you through you chair so um, this planning application is for the erection of a new classroom block together with a drop-off and pick-up area uh, the plan that you can see in front of you at the moment is the the existing site plan um, and again the, that's a close-up of the existing site plan and this is the proposed site plan so the new block will be located east of the main school buildings um, and will be single storey formed in an L shape and will house six new classrooms together with associated cloakrooms, storerooms and bathrooms. The proposals also include a new access from Stubbs Lane and will provide for a new drop-off pickup area and parking bays. So this L shape here is the new classroom block. These are the parking bays, drop-off and pickup area. Um, and this is the new access um, off Stubbs Lane. The proposals have been amended since they were originally submitted. The proposed, build, the proposed building has been reduced in scale and redesigned from a long linear building that measured some 104 metres in length and was 1,535 square metres in floor area to a smaller L-shaped building that is some 650 square metres in floor area and a maximum length of 41 metres. The number of classrooms has also been reduced from seven to six, and the hall that was originally proposed, together with some office accommodation, has been deleted from the scheme. The number of parking spaces has also been reduced from 34, as originally proposed, to 27, with the amended plans and an additional two disabled parking bays. The proposed drop-off pickup area will assist in preventing school traffic from stopping parking in surrounding residential roads. A residence parking scheme along with a new crossing on Nocturum Way will be funded via the development by a Section 106 legal agreement. The proposed new block will be located adjacent to the existing school buildings with the proposed new access road running along the site perimeter to minimise impact on the school fields and the wider area. The proposed materials in the construction of the development are considered to be acceptable. You can see the elevations on the screen. Um, and the bottom picture is, a, is an artist's impression. The amendments secured with the proposal together with the highway improvements and parking scheme to be secured via the 106 agreement are considered to weigh in favour of recommending this application for approval. There is a qualifying petition of objection in connection with this application. Okay, thanks for that. Um, can I just ask, is, is Alan, Alan Brame, are you, are you speaking on behalf of the objectors or? Yes, <laughs> yes I will, Chair, yeah. yeah. Uh, in which case you have five minutes. Right. Okay, thank you, Chair. I, I would like to, to share um, a couple of photographs if I could be given control at that point. Um, this application, as Matthew said, has been modified. The initial one came out in August 2019, and uh, had that proposal been before us tonight, I would certainly have urged the committee to have refused uh, it uh, on the grounds of the traffic impact. Um, the response um, 
the, the petition that was generated was in response to that initial application uh, because residents, particularly in, in Calvary Close, um, were very, um, very concerned about the impact on, on local parking. It has to be said, it's great to see a good local school doing well and um, wanting to expand. Um, and it is not the school's fault that it is in the location that it is. The, um, the bend, uh, is a, the double bend is a fast road down Townfield Lane. Uh, it's not an ideal location for a school, but that's where it is. Um, the residents uh, raised their concerns at the end last autumn, and the, the highways officers uh, took those seriously, and they raised their own concerns related to uh, staff parking, the impact on the local highway network, uh, the pupil drop-off and the proposed pedestrian access from Stubbs Lane. And uh, as a result of that, um, these modifications were made. I, I wonder, is it, is it possible for me to, to share these pictures now? Maybe technologically it's not. Uh, That's okay. Well, I, I won't hold up the meeting if, if it can't be arranged. Um, what they would have demonstrated was the, 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 the nightmare that uh, the current parking situation is uh, uh, around the school. Um, parents park indiscriminately uh, in the neighbouring closes particularly in Calvary Close, but also at the end of some of the closes in the, on the Homans estate. Uh, and then that spills down further into to Claughton Ward. Um, they, they tend to park on the verges there. Um, and uh, it can always become Im impossible at times. Um, the situation is quite dangerous because um, parents park across driveways. Par um, people, residents can't get their cars out of the drive. Um, they park right on the very junction of Calvary Close, which leads on to Townfield Lane, which, is, as I said, is a busy road, and it makes uh, site for access or exit from that road uh, extremely problematic. When the residents heard that there was going to be a 50% increase in the school as it moved from a two to a three-form entry, that obviously raised serious alarm bells. It is bad enough as it is at present, and the prospect of having 50% more traffic in future uh, just seemed in intolerable. Um, but in the light of the comments from highways, significant improvements have been made. The drop-off via Stubbs Lane will certainly help. Whether it will be quite so effective when it comes to pick-up time is another question. Uh, drop-off is relatively quick, but waiting for the children to arrive uh, at the end of the school day um, does take rather longer. And whether there will be sufficient space for all the parents to, to, to pick up their children is, is doubtful. There is no doubt that some parents will still prefer to stop in Calvary Close rather than use the, the new detour via Stubbs Lane. Uh, and those coming from the Holmes estate, of course, it'll be no use to them whatsoever because it'll be a, about a, sort of a half mile detour to get around the road system. Um, so the drop off will help, but the S uh, section 106 recommendation for residence parking is extremely welcome. Um, it is important that, I, that, that parking is curbed, particularly in Calvary Close uh, and the roads off it. Most of the school's catchment area, of course, is within easy walking or cycling distance, and we are trying to encourage active travel, are we not? Um, though we have to recognise it's not a feasible option for everybody. Um, but changes to the application have certainly made it uh, more acceptable, and it does look now that instead of adding to the present chaos, uh, it might 
actually reduce it somewhat. So um, I think the, the residents are content that they have been listened to, uh, their objections have been taken on board, and modifications have been made. And so uh, in the light of that, um, with some concerns, uh, I would now support the scheme. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Okay, sorry, I'm just clicking away. Um, thanks uh, for that. Oh, um, okay, Stuart Wissingham has a question. Stuart. Okay, th thanks, Chair. Um, I'm just... Alan. Is this a question for Alan? Yeah, yeah th thanks for the presentation, Alan. Um, and obviously, you know, it's experience that you know, travelling uh, past Townfield, Townfield School, uh, you know, during the on the, the pick-up and the, and the school room uh, both morning and afternoon and it is uh, an awful uh, traffic situation um, I think my my fear is and I know uh, the, the school borders uh, both Oxton Ward and Clark Ward uh, my, my fear is that we're shifting the problem from uh, Calverley Close to Stubbs Lane um, I'm just wondering you know, what your thoughts on Alan, Alan and uh, you know, what would you say to the residents of Stubbs Lane? Uh, no, I, I know, knowing that it's not, it's not in your ward, so I, I'm, ju I'm just uh, conscious that we may be all shifting the problem one, from one ward to, to the next ward. Um, well, welcome your thoughts. Well, well, as far as I can see, there are proposals to put to WML lines in, in Stubbs Lane, um, so that would presumably prevent some of the, the backup of parking there. And uh, obviously they would have residents accessing and exiting the school, uh, but that doesn't involve going past any of the houses, as far as I know. Um, I, I don't foresee it being a major problem for Stubbs Lane residents, but I am conscious that quite a number of those uh, did raise their personal objections uh, to the application in the first place. Whether they've subsequently changed their minds, uh, I, I don't know. Perhaps the, the Clawton Ward councillors can comment on that aspect. I guess, I guess they will. I'm, I'm no doubt we'll question uh, the highways um, uh, officers as well. Any further questions? For the objectors, then. That's uh, Steve Hayes. Hi, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, I've got a question for Alan. Um, regarding the points you made about the Holmes Lane traffic going to the school, I mean, as you as you sort of did mention, that's not going to really benefit anyone on that side of the border because obviously it's, there is a rather large detour to actually get to the school if you were going to go in a car. Uh, how badly do you think that would be affect? How, how bad do you th would you think it would affect those residents in particular? Uh, my, my suspicion is it won't have a huge change either way because Honan's estate is already in a catchment area for the school. So I think those students who are going to um, uh, Townfield uh, are already there. I don't see the... Uh, uh, a, a significant increase there, but there are problems at the top of Marple Close and Stretton Close and, uh, and the top of Ulton Close, uh, and that's why they have been uh, proposed to be included in the um, the residence parking scheme, subject to the obviously consultation. Thank you, Alan. Okay, thanks for that. So. Um, sorry, I've got things in the way of me chat now. Steve, <laughs> that's the officers to stop me, Jimmy. Steve, did you have a question there? Um, yes, I, I did because um, the only roads that have been mentioned as part of the residence parking scheme, this is to Alan, seem to be in the Oxton ward. Uh, I think it sounds as though those in Clawmore, all they're getting is a set of um, double yellow lines. And as in his own um, acceptance said, there has been of current parents reckless parking on grass verges, which is illegal and so on and so forth. So um, how can how can a residence parking scheme only be concentrated in one ward? We, we believe this has been distorted, this application, because physically it's set 
in Oxton Ward, and most of the consultation has taken place in Oxton Ward, yeah, it, it affects mostly Claughton Ward. But I don't believe uh, there's any, are there any of the roads included in the residence parking scheme in Claughton Ward? Well, that, that's not really a, a question for the objectors, is it? That, that'll be a question oh, for finally, my, Carl my, and my other question to you, Chair, is how can an objector talk and be a supporter in the same voice? I think that was a bit uh, strange. Well, the, 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 the lead petition, a petition was organised from, um, uh, from residents in Calvary Close and they contacted their councillor to, to represent them. So, um, But we, we can explore some of the other uh, issues you, you, you've raised when, when we... Um, um, well, when we're in debate and we can we can speak with the um, uh, highways engineer. Right. Chair, can I just very quickly comment on uh, Councillor Fox's uh, question? Um, the the original objection was to the original application, and as I said in my presentation, that application was subsequently modified. And so, although the original uh, application uh, objection stood, um, I, I think that the feeling uh, against the application has has abated, at least in the Oxton side. Obviously, you're better placed to speak for the residents of Claughton. Okay, thanks for that. Okay, so we also have the applicants. <coughs> We also have the applicants here with us. Um, is Drew Dutton available online? Hi, Jay. Yes, uh, available and present. Excellent. Um, okay, so um, you also now have five minutes um, to uh, address us, um, after which I'll ask if there's any questions of clarification uh, members may have, and I'll, I'll give you a, uh, a nudge when you have one minute uh, to, uh, to go. Um, yes. If you... Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you for, um, for the opportunity to speak. My name is Drew Dutton and I represent the, uh, the architects um, for Townfield Primary School, school Scheme. Um, I have a quote from Councillor Brown's um, comments there. We were not the original architects on the, uh, the scheme which um, put the planning application in August. Um, we were brought in uh, to the revised application. So um, we've taken on board the comments um, as Councillor Brown has identified there. Um, so I just want to um, just, just run through uh, the few areas. So the school obviously secured for SIF funding um, to allow intake of additional 28 pupils starting this September, uh, and they found themselves oversubscribed, which is why um, this new teaching facility has come about. Um, and obviously... The, well, the the main area of concern is the highways, and I don't want to sort of repeat what's already just been said, but obviously there's no formal parking um, within the scheme to drop off um, and drop off and pick up zones. Um, so as a result of the uh, planning uh, feedback that we've received over a period of uh, four or five months, um, we've incorporated as best we can onto the side that we can, um, obviously being sympathetic to um, the existing woodland that's there. Um, and incorporated a drop-off um, and then pick-up zone, which will alleviate that unwanted stress and burden on the, on the, and the health and safety input impact on um, both the residents, uh, pupils, and parents. Um, so that's being taken into account. Um, we would be included in this application. Um, however, we do appreciate there's um, an air apprehension from the residents or surrounding stub lanes. Um, and it's why the school have agreed to the Section 106 agreement, um, which will include the residence parking scheme and the costly in Ireland, not to and way. Um, and I guess, obviously, we've identified that there may be some questions regarding that, so I'll welcome uh, the highways engineers to just um, discuss that. But um, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to speak, and I will take questions. Okay. Are there, are there any questions? Um, uh, Stuart Whittingham. Yeah, th th thanks, Chair. And it's a shame the, the school does not represent themselves here because uh, I suppose my question is around demand. Because here we, we have a school that's uh, in, you know, it's oversubscribed uh, and obviously having to expand to take account of that, or looking to expand to take account of that. Uh, whereas, you know, certainly there's other schools, not, 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 
not too far away, uh, not surplus places. So I'm, I'm just, you know, trying to you know, figure out the sense in that. Yeah, and I'm just wondering if the, if, if the applicants has, has, has got any thoughts on that. Uh, thanks, thanks, Stuart. Um, obviously, I, I can't comment on the other school with um, you know, taking on board more pupils. Um, but I have spoken to them, and um, they, they oversubscribed um, because there were two applications within it. One to take on students, and um, obviously this plan application, which is running alongside that. Um, and obviously, the original application has been approved um, alongside the SIF bid to release those funds um, to build this classroom facility. Um, well, as you say, I cannot comment on um, additional schools in the, within the area where, where kids could go to um, to that area. Thanks for that. Any further questions of the applicants? Okay, no. Uh, Mr. Dalton, thank you very much for your... Um, for your presentation, and I'll open up to the uh, uh, to the committee. Any comments from members? Then um, do we want to bring in Carl to pick up some of the points that Steve? Uh, found yeah. Stuart. Stuart. George, are you? I, I I would like to speak at some point, please. Okay, shall, shall we begin with Carl? Because I suspect most yeah, of the questions... Well, I've got some questions to Carl as well. Okay. So, so it, it's up to you, totally in your hands here. All I'm saying is I'm waking up the phone and, and I can't get into you to speak to, to highlight. So at some point, if you let me have my say, please. Thank you. Okay, I, th I think, George, George, you may as well ask questions if they're directed to Carl, and then Carl can pick up... Uh, answers uh, to those uh, when he addresses us on the general question of um, of parking. Okay, I mean so, uh, some some of the some of the points have already been made in in, in the questions to um, Mr. Dutton uh, in terms of uh, and, and and to Councillor Brown. Um, the, the the issue is all about the parking part, which is the main thing. I have had. A meeting or had a long conversation with Carl about this and the engineer's position. Um, now he says that there's no objection being raised to the present development. I, I have been down to the yesterday. I, I went down and I went to the gate, which is going to be the entrance to the drop-off point. And lo and behold, the last house in Holgarth, uh, as you go through the gate, the um, the garage is on the side, which is right in front of the gate. So I, I, I question, has anybody had any consultation with anyone in Hogarth Drive where it is going to affect? Because it was mentioned before, I think what we are doing is moving the problem from one side of the road to the other side of the road. So it comes out of, of, of your ward, if you like, Stuart, and moves across to the Clorton ward, who will have all these problems with the same and and an extra 160 pupils coming to the school. And I think it's, it, this is not acceptable in the present context. The other thing I've got major concerns about is at the bottom of the field, I, I, haven't, I can't see your drawings, but you're up. But at the bottom, where you've got the, the, the drawing, the main drawing, um, the... The whole thing is the present moment in time. The bottom end of that field, where you see the blue, that's coming from the, from the pond. But nevertheless, I've, I've checked with architects, and basically the amount of building that is going to be put onto this site will, again, cause problems with water ingress and coming down. Now, at this present moment in time, with the houses which you see at the bottom are flooded every time there's any uh, heavy rain. And that, when I say flooded, I'm talking about six inches of rain comes, six inches of water comes across their back gardens and then down the side of their garages and out onto, onto Hogarth Drive. 
Um, all the engineers are aware of this position. My my ans- my question would be, uh, while we're talking about doing these sorts of things, this needs a new drain put in, which was missed out the last time. I've had this confirmed by engineers, and I am saying I think as part of this, because of such a, a major change in the school, I honestly believe that for the for, for those people that are down there, which are, are affected by this, there should be some sort of 106 for them to make sure that that is eradicated and they are no longer flooded from this field. And I'll, I'll leave it at that at the present moment, Stu. OK, let me bring Carl in to, to address the points that George has raised, uh, and then I'll bring Stu with him and see where we, we are then. Carl, do you want to speak to us about traffic and drains? Certainly, for, for you, Chair. Um, the amended drop-off, pick-up and turning facility... Uh Um, and to the priority junctions within the adjacent residential area to prevent inconsiderate or dangerous parking. Um, it is also recommended that the school travel plan is updated uh, with the latest proposals to include new targets and measures to reduce both staff parking demands and pupil drop-off pick-up traffic over the period of the phased intake increase. Um, the travel plan does require some further work. I think it was uh, last updated 2015, so the applicant will need to address the phased increase of pupils over the planned seven years and consider how parents can actively be encouraged to bring their children to school by more sustainable modes. Um, and this is particular re- relevance as they have shown that a high proportion of the school's current pupils live within an acceptable walking distance um, from the school. In, in terms of uh, the drainage, uh, which, which Councillor Davis uh, has just referred to there, um, I am aware of this issue, and I, I know colleagues from the Council's asset management team uh, are aware of this matter as well. Um, I understand that it is an, an existing issue, and I, I would propose that, that that is sort of considered as, as a separate matter going forward. Um, hope, hope that clarifies the position. Yeah. Can, I, can, I just, can I just come back on that, please? Stuart? Certainly, George, yeah. Just, just, just one point, just, Carl. The point, the point I'm making. When I went down there today, uh, yesterday, sorry, I came down the the, the the road where you know you come off the roundabout, come down Stub, into Stubbs Lane, hit straight across. That then takes you to the gate where the, the, the proposed uh, driving and, and drop off point is going to be. Now, if you look at the last house alongside there and the houses come down all onto the field. The last house there, the garage, is on the gate, actually on the gate. So I don't know how you're going to get around that, because if he wants to come out or she wants to come out to go to work or whatever, then that is going to cause a major problem. There's, there's no way that last house would, you would not be able to operate from his own property. For, for you, Chair, yeah, I completely understand um, your point there, Councillor. Um, the, ultimately, as I say, we're proposing to put parking control measures in along Stubbs Lane, but what I would point out is this isn't the only um, principal access into the school. This is almost um, a, a, another secondary access because parents and pupils can still take um, their children into the school via Townfield Lane. There is a pedestrian access there, and the pedestrian access... Um, which runs um, through the, the homelands area it is also available as well, which obviously serves a large residential area. Yeah, I understand that, Carl, but, but just listening to what Councillor Brown said before, and, and that, that the Calvary and, and the others down there, I know exactly what he's saying, because I've seen it myself, and it's a very bad spot on the bend and everything else, 
But if you, if if the traffic can't go there, it's got to go somewhere else. That's the point I'm making. So you're moving one to another one, and it come into Stubbs Lane Estate. No if buts and doubts about it. So I've just got real serious concerns about the highways things. I really have, and maybe another look at this needs to be done. Okay. Um... We've got Stuart again. Thanks, Chair. I'm not sure this will work. There's any chance we can try and share my screen? Because I think it'd just be useful <clears throat> for the committee. <coughs> Is that possible? Can we enable? Can we enable? Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, where are we? Um, we just bear with me on that one. Okay. So, so there's, there's. Can you all see that? So there's Stubbs Lane. Right. I know. Obviously, there's this, but no. Uh, no. Uh, no parking park restrictions. No down Stubbs Lane. But we we turn round. There's the garage, and there's the gate. No, that, that George. Um, yeah, was referring to. Yeah, and and you know, obviously, obviously you, know, you, you see the, you, know, you, you, you see you see the proximity of the uh, of the garage. There's that gate, um, and I, I think I think I'm turn off my screen sharing now. Um, now I, I know there's a you know, there's a condition no to um, issues the parking restrictions. No, but you know, from my experience, uh, they're ignored, and, and un unless you, know, you, you can get you can get you can get you can, get, you can go and see wardens there, um, every every time you no know, school drops off, uh, the school run you no know, both morning and afternoon, then any park restrictions will be, you know, will be ignored, uh, you no, know, basically, and I I, you know, I I fear that you know this is going to cause real difficulties for people, you know, especially the the you no, know, on the the section of Stubbs Lane, you no know, down down to the gate, but also the the, you know, the access to the the whole estate, and the rest of Stubbs Lane, because as you can see, you no know, from the, uh, you no know, from the, you know, it's not particularly wide, um, and no, you know, you, you can well imagine that you know people are just going to flout uh, the park restrictions and 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 just you no know, park where they like really, and uh, because it, it happens in my ward. Um, obviously, obviously, we, we've, got, we've got two very you know, busy schools uh, right in the middle of Upton, uh, and, and, and it's, a, it's a constant source of frustration to local residents. Um, you know, both illegal and dangerous parking, uh, and obviously, we you know, were raising this um, on a regular basis with uh, the, the road safety team, who, who, you know, to be fair, you know, do come out. We put you no know, more uh, yellow lines down. Uh, but obviously, the other lines are only, only as good as, you know, as when people uh, observe them. Uh, because unless there's a warden there, you know, 24 hours a day, then you know, it's, it's, it's going to be ignored. I'll, I'll try and unshare my screen now. <laughs> yeah. Right, thanks for not breaking it. Uh, Steve Fawkes, we'll, I'll, I'll bring in and let's see whether. Okay, oops, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry about that, yeah. Um, the, um, once the, the highways officer, are we still concentrating on highways issues? So I'll, I, there's oops. another general planning point for Matthew, maybe. But it, by, by their own volition, they, the consultation and the residence parking scheme that is subject to the Section 106 seems to have been based on an original application that, that is no longer current. The current application does put more traffic down Stubbs Lane, the other end of, the other end of the site. And you say it's not the only way in, but it's, gonna, it's significant. So my view is that how can the planning committee be asked to vote for a residence parking scheme that has ostensibly been created around a different application? 
So until we know the, the, the full details of the parking scheme and which roads are going to be covered, it is absolutely impossible. Unless you give me a guarantee or you can guarantee that the sum of money is adequate to cover all the other roads that may be affected now by the new application and the current ones, then it's simply a, a no-go for, for, for many many people on the committee because it, it, you've created a parking residence parking scheme based on a different application and not this current application which steadily diverts traffic to other roads. Simply putting yellow da- yellow lines down, it doesn't cut the mustard, quite quite frankly, in terms of um, the highways issue. So I'd like that address, please. Carl, can you come back to us on the residence parking scheme? I'm mean, obviously I'm familiar with the the issues in in Oxford, as, as uh, Alan Payne was, um, with the sum of money that, that's being uh, attached to the uh, uh, Section 106 for residence parking, would, would that be sufficient if there was a feeling um, later on to cover parts of Weathersfield and Stubbs Lane? For, for you, Chair, um, the, the, the sum of money that's... Um, that has been um, earmarked, I think it's £25,000 in total, um, that would cover the roads um, sort of to the, to the south and the, the east of the school. Um, so it, it, wasn't, it didn't cover Stubbs Lane and the other sort of Ruskin Way, um, Hogarth Drive. So that would require um, a modification of that figure because obviously the calculations that we've made um, are based on the number of properties where concerns have been raised from objectors. Um, we've looked at the initial setup fees. Um, it covered the sort of first um, two to three years of permitting fees as well. The civil elements in terms of um, traffic signs and, and road markings. So that that would have to be modified. Okay, and um, and just just as a follow on the the point about displacements um, out of the currently affected roads into. Um, stood playing the Hogarth estate and potentially help close, etc. Has that been considered by uh, by the engineers and what professional view um, did they take? It has. So that, that has been um, considered. And as I said uh, earlier in my response, um, that the new drop-off, this new access road and this new drop-off facility is considered to be um, a vast improvement uh, on what is currently occurring in the area at the moment. Um, it's 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 a wide uh, access road. There's perpendicular bays on one side. There's um, lay-by parking on the other. There's a turning head at the bottom there. And again, my understanding is um, that this would be managed. Um, the queuing system would be managed by um, the staff as well um, to reduce and and you know to not to discourage parents from using that new facility because ultimately that is. What we want parents to do is use that new drop-off facility to take vehicular movements away from the, off the public highway and onto onto the new access road. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Leslie Rennie. You've access to the chat, Leslie. Yeah, th- uh, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Can I just um, ask a question to the highways officer as well, if um, that's the appropriate time? Just wondering um, if he could perhaps enlighten me as to what discussions have actually gone on with the school, um, because clearly the school, I would imagine, are anxious to have these extra children in by September, and I would hope that they've, um, you know, been working with our highways department to make sure that these highway issues are going to be ironed out by then, and um, I. I've, Am I right in thinking that the school may even be um, paying for some of the the highway improvements around the school? Thank you. Carl, do you want to, if you could pick them up? Yeah, for you, Chair. So, yeah, my my understanding um, with this application is that it, it is a phased intake. So the increase in pupils from I think the existing number is 550 to just over 700. That w- no, that won't happen uh, at any one time. It would be gradually over sort of the years. Uh, Matthew could maybe um, clarify that. Um, but in terms of the, the, the sort of the engagement has, has been through um, the planning officers um, and through the applicants. Okay. Okay with that, Leslie? Um, 
Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Steve Hayes. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, a question to the Highways Officer. Um, I'm quite familiar with the area there, and I do know that um, opposite Halton Close that faces onto Nocturum Lane, is it or Nocturum Road? I can't remember now. But, but the, 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 there's double yellow lines that ends, if I remember rightly, by the Will 100 pub, and then there's no yellow lines. I know it's absolute bedlam certainly at uh, pick-up times along Nocturum Lane on the way towards the roundabout that would then eventually lead to Stubbs Lane. Is there any considerations to putting your double yellow lines on the other side of the road opposite the houses that front on Helton Close? Yeah, for you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, there, there are proposals to include the priority junctions, um, I think, to Weathersfield Road and Helton Close because we are... Um, mindful that there is also parking which occurs uh, in those areas so that that's also included okay thank you thanks for that uh any further comments or proposals from from members okay um yeah i'm i'm familiar with the the, the area um as well Oh, I beg your pardon, Steve. And see you. Uh, question to Matthew. Steve Fawkes. Uh, to you, Chair, um, I'm pretty sure I just need confirmation about the issue about the extra intake of pupils. Um, what is it? Uh, could it be considered a material planning consideration if that extra intake of pupils was to the de detriment of other infrastructures, such as other schools? Or is it similar to the competition rules in, in a commercial basis that it's a free-for-all? Because I am aware that um, the Oxton Primary School is an academy, is it not? And so, it is acting completely independently. And could, this could be to the detriment to the infrastructure of the, the wider community. Is that and can that be considered as a material planning consideration? Um, no, it's a simple answer. It, 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 you're right, it's, it's the same is my microphone on? Yeah, it is. Yes, so, again. Um, it, it's the same sort of rules around sort of competition with 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 shops. So um, it, it's not something that you know. If if pupils were to be taken away from here or or from other schools, then that that's not something that, that we could take into consideration as part of the planning process. Okay, I just uh, non-planning comments. I think this is one of the flaws of academies, especially at primary level. Uh, you know, a bit of a free for all. You know, kids are money, and I think it's a, it's in terms of overall government policy, it's an absolute disgrace. I think um, uh, just on that, I don't necessarily disagree with that. I mean, there was a consultation well, last year or, or um, uh, the, the year before um, when the academy uh, proposed to increase its intake. Um, I think it did need permission from the northwest. Uh, educational commissioner um, for that and obviously representations were made um, by by schools and that that decision wasn't our decision I think it was they, they did need to get permission um, to to increase the intake um, I, I think during the course of that consultation uh, the previous head teacher um, had indicated that he expected most of the increase to come from the um, Clawton side of the road um, uh, as it were, because they were the kids that were in his nursery groups that he wasn't then able to accommodate in the main school because of the uh, the catchment area that they worked to. Um, because even though it's an academy, it, it does work to uh, to will councils' um, uh, uh, access, uh, intake uh, policies. It doesn't actually have a term. Um, just to add to that, uh, Stuart Wessingham, let's come back. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Just a final question to the Howies engineer. I'm, ju I'm just wondering, Carl, uh, in your discussions with the school, has there been any talk about school buses? Uh, because uh, judging by the, you know, the, the CGIs that uh, was shared earlier, uh, there's a reception area at the rear, rear of the school. Uh, so has there been any discussion about that being used as a pick up, pick up and drop off for school buses? Um, and if, if if not, is the ability there? Is, is the ability there no force be used for school buses? Because I should imagine this uh, 
and that's when people on Stubbs Lane uh, want is uh, a procession of schools and go past the going past the many the houses. For you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Yeah, th there's no, um, there are no proposals for existing um, school bus operators to, to to use that new facility. Is my understanding, they will continue. They will continue to um, service the school in in, in the same way uh, as they are now. Okay, thanks for that. And uh, Leslie Rennie, you wish to come back? Yeah, uh, yes, thank you, Jane. Uh, just a question, really. Um, clearly, yeah, yes, it's an academy school, and just wondering um, whether or not um, the local authority were uh, supportive of the expansion, um, and had they been consulted? Um, because clearly, I would hope that if that were the case, then children's department would have been supportive of it. Can one of the officers perhaps uh, answer or allude to some sort of answer on that question, please? Uh, through you, Chair, they are general, they are supportive of the application. Yes. Uh, was was Le Leslie? Was your question about the expansion as opposed to the application? Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, may not have been in the right place, but yeah, just wondering if the um, as I say, the local authority had been consulted, and if they had, were they yeah, supportive? And I've got my answer. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Yep, a lot of the discussion on the issue of traffic, and uh, I know all members um, who have schools in their wards, not, not just this school, traffic around schools in the morning, um, all over the borough is, is absolute bedlam, um, and a heck of a lot more needs to be done uh, to try and control uh, traffic um, uh, around schools. There are uh, initiatives uh, all the councils uh, follow. Um, we have the opportunity, you know, as, as a planning um, application, we're, we're, we're looking at uh, a number of classrooms um, uh, and a Um, has already gone through. Um, I've heard what uh, World Councillors for Clawson have, have had to say in terms of the um, uh, the drainage. Um, I've heard Carl um, offer to, uh, to 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 look at that um, outside, if you like, this uh, particular application, um, and I hope we can uh, accept that. Um, I've I've not heard anybody. Uh, suggests that they will have a another proposal to put. Um, just to start the ball, that I will move uh, approval um, from the chair for this, uh, including the section one of six. Is there a seconder? Yes, chair. I'm happy to second that. Uh, Councillor Bruce Berry. Uh, thanks, Bruce. Um, are there any? Further contributions anybody wish to make before we vote? Okay. Okay, so the motion is for approval. Voting will be for, against or abstaining on the motion. The solicitor will call your name. Please turn on your camera and microphone and say who you are before voting. Members should only cast a vote if they have heard the planning officer's presentation and the debate in relation to this matter in full and have not had any technical difficulties during this item. In the event that you have, that you have had problems here in the discussion, you should not vote and indicate not voting when called. Okay, let me hand over to the uh, solicitor to conduct the vote. Thank you, Chair. Can I call on Councillor Berry? Yes, I've heard the full debate and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Corkill? Andy Corkill voting for. Thank you. Councillor Davis? Councillor George Davis, at this present moment in time, I can't vote for it. I will be voting against. Thank you. 
Councillor Fawkes. Uh, through you, Chair, I'll be voting against. Thank you. Councillor Frost. Voting against. Thank you. Councillor Hayes. I've heard and seen everything in the base. I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Hodson. I've heard the I've heard the full debate and I'll be voting for. Thank you. Councillor Jordan. I've heard the full debate and I will be voting for. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. Uh, yep, Sue Kelly, I've heard the debate and voting for. Thank you. Councillor Kenny. Voting against. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Venny. Yes, I've heard the full debate and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Stewart. I have heard the full debate and I'm voting against. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that, Councillor Stewart. Could you say that again? Um, yeah, Councillor Stewart and I'm voting against. Against, thank you. Councillor Whittingham. Yeah, uh, heard the full debate, definitely voting against. Thank you. Councillor Williams. I'm voting against. Okay. <laughs> yes, Councillor Chair, that's uh, seven votes for and seven votes against. Okay, so that's a tie, and I'll exercise the casting vote uh, in favour for our application has been uh, approved. Um, okay, we move now to uh, agenda item five, various locations on network rail land. Okay, um, Like Steve's declared an interest on this. I'll just see if he's left. Is he gone? He has shared, I think. Thank you. Okay. Um, I wonder whether I can ask... Yeah. Uh, to, um, what I was going to do, Stuart, was I was just going to ask um, Cecilia to advise us on consultation. Or would you like would you like to speak first so that we can remind ourselves what what your proposal was, and then I'll ask the solicitor and maybe Matthew just to advise us on it. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Obviously, my proposal is to uh, to defer this application. Uh, to allow for further consultations to take place uh, with the ward councillors and local residents. Uh, there's no way am I uh, alleging that uh, uh, as a council of the local plan authority we've not undertaken our statutory duties uh, because um, I'm, I'm sure that that's happened. But I think, I think the beneficial both to the applicants, to the local residents as the ward councillors, if we give that opportunity for that extra bit of consultation, um, no, 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 just try and if, we, if, if there's any local room, we can smooth over, smooth over uh, any 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 objections by either you know, getting the mask or you know, by getting that and give, giving a bit of chance to uh, local people. Okay, Cecilia. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just to make it clear to the members um, that there is no statutory requirement on Mersey Travel or um, National Rail to carry out a consultation on this development. Um, members may be aware and may be getting confused with the um, supplementary planning um, guidance that we have in relation to mobile phone operators, which does refer to a statement of community involvement, but this is not an application for a mo mobile phone um, facility. So there's no requirement to carry out consultation with the public or with members. The applicant 
has requested the application to be determined and we can't require them to consult, members should be aware that if uh, we do defer the matter, that they could appeal for non-determination. And members should also be aware that Mersey Travel could carry out the work themselves without the need for a planning application. And this may be a reason why they haven't felt the need to carry out any consultation with the public. Um, so just to stress there are therefore no grounds upon which we can legally require the, um, the to be consultation. And I would not advise deferral purely on those grounds. I don't know if Matthew wants to add anything to that. Uh, yep, through you, Chair. I mean, I would advise that we sent out email alerts to all um, ward councillors, so they were notified of the proposals. And additionally, we sent out 440 neighbour notifications, um, which is considerably in excess of what we would normally send out um, on, on, in consultation on a, on a planning application. So, I mean, my, my understanding is, as Cecilia has pointed out, there's two issues here. There's our statutory um, obligation as the local planning authority, which, which we've more than met. Um, and then there's, there's, there's the sort of pre-engagement between the uh, between the applicant and and the uh, the local community, and as Cecilia has quite right, rightly pointed out, um, you know we we can't um, enforce that. We can't um, make people um, enter into that. Um, as disappointing as that might be, it doesn't form part of the statutory function uh, or the statutory duty that that we have uh, that we fully met. Okay, let me bring um, Stuart back in first, see if he has any, any questions on those points, and then I'll, uh, I'll ask Leslie to join us. Stuart? Okay, th 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 thanks, Chair. Uh, so, my motion is, does not require uh, further consultation. Uh, my motion actually reads to allow th further consultation, and, and I think you know, if the applicant uh, decides not to do that, then um, obviously that, that's their lockout. Um, in, in, on the technical note, uh, as I understand this, um, rowing infrastructure on railway land uh, can be allowed under permitted development rights uh, by Network Rail. Uh, so I'm just on why we're here. Why are we here? You know, with this in front of a public committee, and why was it was refused? You know, can it happen anyway? The the applicant in this instance is not Network Rail. Network Rail have permitted development rights under the general permitted development order. And if they were to be, if they had submitted the application, well, if they were to um, to carry out the works, it wouldn't have needed an application. They could have done it um, um, using their permitted development. The difficulty in this situation is that the application has been submitted on behalf of Mersey Rail, um, who are not a a rail undertaker, um, although they do run the, um, the 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 network. So that's why a planning application is required in this instance. But the fallback position is, if Network Rail were to do it, um, then they could do it without needing an application. Okay, let me bring in some other members uh, just on this uh, on this, these points uh, to ask uh, their questions. Uh, I'll take Leslie Rennie, then I'll take Brian Kelly. Yeah, yeah thank you, Chair. I mean, I find myself um, uh, sympathising and wishing to agree, really, with Councillor Stuart Whittingham. Um, it seems uh, a real shame, really, that residents on this occasion haven't been consulted. And I think, as Stuart rightly says, you know, we're, we're all keen to see um, rail travel expand over, over the coming years and decades, and I'm sure it will. And um, whether Mersey Rail would uh, perhaps have second thoughts and then they would um, go forward with a consultation because, you know, we don't want to be coming up against a brick wall every time there has to be an expansion of, of this type. Um, I know um, that the residents have been extremely aggrieved that they feel as if this is just getting done to them, um, not with them. And um, I think perhaps um, if you would allow um, Councillor, um, uh, sorry, Chair, um, that Councillor Ian Lewis may just like to very uh, shortly contribute uh, something just to, to this particular question, if that's uh, agreeable. Thank you. I think the problem I have uh, with that um, uh, Leslie, is it, is it Ian is isn't a member of the committee today, um, and he's 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 representing uh, objectors. Now to reach Ian, 
if you like, as, as an objector, then we would need to take the item, hear the officer's presentation, hear from Ian, and then hear from the developer and then determine. Um, I mean, that's my preferred um, uh, option, I have to say. I mean, if, 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 the, if after the end of hearing the presentations, we feel that uh, that we don't have sufficient information uh, to determine it, then um, uh, then we can make a, a decision based on that. I'm afraid the advice that I'm getting is that I can't just bring in uh, Ian to speak as, as because he's an objector uh, in this case. I hope that's um, that that's relatively clear. I'll bring Brian in in now to make his contribution, um, and then we'll need to um, uh, to make a decision. Okay, thank you, Chair. I mean, everything I've heard, even over the last few minutes, leads me to support the suggestion from Councillor Whittingham that the issue could be deferred. Uh, from what I can see of the application, I don't think it's that time critical that it couldn't wait till either the next or a, uh, or a future meeting. And even the discussion we've had over the last few minutes where Councillor Rennie for example, has said that she knows a lot of residents feel that the issue is being uh, more or less forced upon them. I think it would be sensible for us all to take a, a step back, take a deep breath, have a look at the issue in more detail, how it's going to affect all the residents, and defer it from tonight. Because I'm still not even clear in my own mind exactly why this issue is on the agenda, because from what I've heard uh, from Matthew, uh, if the issue, if the application had been submitted in a different way, then strictly speaking, it would not even have needed approval from the committee. So the question is, well, why is it on the agenda? Why have we got to make a decision tonight if there's still so much uncertainty and confusion about the whole thing? So as things stand here, I'm, uh, I'm minded to support the suggestion that the issue be deferred so that if and when it does have to come back before the committee, we're all very clear exactly what we're voting on. And at the same time, it will be given, it'll give any residents who are still unsure more opportunity to consider the whole thing. Thank you, Chair. Thanks. Um, uh, Matthew, do did, 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 did you want to go over again why it's here as opposed to... Yeah, I mean, well, very, very briefly then. So, as members will be aware, there's, uh, there's permitted development, there's the general permitted development order that grants permitted development, not just to, not just to householders, but to st certain statutory undertakers. And net Network Rail is a statutory undertaker and to carry out works as part of their operations along the rail network. So if Network Rail had put in this application, well, if Network Rail were the applicants, then they wouldn't have needed to put an application in. They have permitted, they have permitted development rights to do the works. So there is potentially the option that Network Rail could undertake to, to do these works on behalf of Mersey Rail, uh, Mercy Travel, and, um, and and the application wouldn't even need to come before the local planning authority. The reason it's before us now is that Mersey Travel have put the application in through their agents, um, and they're not a railway undertaker, um, so they don't benefit from the PD rights that that, that Network Rail um, um, have. Um, so so that's why we're being asked to consider the application. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Um, <laughs> to, to be honest, I'm sensing that there's probably a majority in the committee to to defer it, but I, I, I think I think um, Stuart, can you can you come back on so that you can be clear what it is that you want to happen during the deferral? What your thoughts are on the time scale so that that can form part of the. Uh, uh, so that we understand, you know, it's not an, it's not an open-ended deferral, um, uh, and we'll. Um, so, 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 I, all those so as as I understand it, the, you know, this infrastructure is uh, you know, integral to the operation of the new trains. So I'm I'm, I'm sure uh, both uh, Mersey Travel, Mersey Rail, and the Africans won't want you know, this piece to go and go, this to be dragged on, you no know, dragged out forever. Uh, I think it gives the opportunity. Then to engage with local community and, and make a judge, you know, adjustments, you know, as, you know, as, as, as a, 
as no, as no, as, as when they, no, they, no, they didn't reach agreements. I think um, it gives the opportunity for Mr. Shaft to engage with the local community. Um, as I said, no, the, the, my motion is not uh, mandating uh, further further consultation. Uh, I'm asking for a deferral of a reasonable. I'm, I'm open to you know a, a time scale. I think it needs to be a reasonable time scale um, to allow for further you know, consultation. Um, and if, if, the, if the applicants you know, choose not to consult, then you know, it's their look really, isn't it? Um, I, think, I think it's in everyone's interest to have that extra consultation to take place. So I'm not. I'm not. I'm not pressured about time. I don't know other members might may want for a. A time limit on it, um, but I'm, I'm sure it'd be everyone's interest to ex- expediate uh, you know, this as quickly as possible. Because I know I know the, the trades are actually out in the network and are being tested. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, a couple of other members want to make comments, and then we'll um, we'll see where we are. Um, Steve Hayes. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just want to make a comment, really. I, I mean, I, I'm in agreement with what you suggested, to be honest, uh, which seems to be contrary to what other people have said, but I just feel that until we've heard the arguments from the objectors and everything else, we can't really make uh, a proper decision as to whether or not the representation has actually happened. I mean, we've all received a couple of emails off uh, ward councillors and also um, objectors, but we get that for every application. I fear we're, we, we could be setting a poor precedence here. Because if we if we allow this to be deferred without any discussion, I mean, what's going to happen next meeting or the meeting after that? You know, this you know, a couple of emails. We haven't been consulted. You know, we haven't really heard any proper discussion on this. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um... And uh, Kathy Hodgson. Um, yes, Chair. I just wanted to agree with um, Steve Hayes there, because if the applicant doesn't have a statutory duty to consult, uh, as the solicitor has indicated, and, and if the applicant, as Matthew has said, um, c- could be changed so that they uh, would have permitted development rights, then whilst we tonight have the opportunity to listen to both sides of the argument and and make a decision um, based on the application before us. Um, if we don't discuss it tonight, then the chances are that we won't necessarily have a chance to discuss it at all um, if it could be um, changed under permitted development rights and just go ahead anyway. Uh, am, I, am I right in what I've just said? Uh, shall I answer that, Chair? Yes, please. Yeah. You know, so... <laughs> I mean, to be clear, um, we cannot um, we cannot um, enforce or, or require the applicant, um, whoever they may be, to engage more widely with the with the community. We can only ask them to do that, uh, but there's no statutory duty for them to do that in this type of application, or indeed in, a, in any type of application. So the statutory provisions come into play when we determine the application as the planning authority. And as I've said, over 400 notifications were sent out to local residents and local residents have had their opportunity to make their representations on this application. Um, and indeed, that's why the application is in, is, is in front of the committee tonight, uh, not only because the ward councillor has asked for it to be taken out of delegation, because, but also because of the number of representations that we've received on the application as well. So we, we, we can ask them, but there's no, there's no statutory obligation for them to undertake that. Um, and as Cecilia pointed out at the beginning of the, pro, at the, beginning of the, the discussion, um, the applicant could ultimately take the decision to to appeal against a non-determination. Um, we end up with a, with an appeal situation, which ultimately could could uh, result in a an application for award of costs because the council has, has acted unreasonably. Um, and 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 the the second point that Councillor Hodson raised is yes, if the applicant was different, if it was network rail, then we wouldn't be in this position. We wouldn't have an application in front of us anyway. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, the motion's been moved and seconded. I'm obviously, I'm going to need to take it. I think my, my view is, um, if I may finally just maybe address the mover and the seconder, um, both of whom have accepted um, that the infrastructure that we're 
likely to be debated at some point uh, is going to be necessary for the purposes of running the new trains. Um, uh, that being the case, the, the only thing really that can, we can enter into discussion on um, is, is, the, is, the, is the, the exact sighting points of the, um, uh, of the masts. Um, now, if we defer, then I guess we're going to just ask our officers to engage with, uh, with the applicants uh, to ensure that, you know, other, other potential sites that, uh, that, that residents or war councillors might be likely to, uh, to suggest uh, have been considered and, and discounted for whatever reason. Or, as Steve Hayes suggests, we could move on, uh, hear from the objector, hear from the applicants, and actually ask the uh, applicant directly whether they have considered uh, other sites and what the reasons are for the sites that they've um, uh, they've uh, they've uh, selected. Um, so that that's that's my view. My, um, personally, I would be for. Um, as Steve Hayes has, has indicated, uh, getting on, hearing what the objector's um, uh, complaint is and what their suggestion is for an alternative, and hearing the applicants uh, respond to that. I, I can see readily that you know um, that that piece of work um, could well be done in, in some sort of uh, deferred uh, capacity, but I certainly wouldn't want it really to take longer. Uh, than our next meeting or at the very outside the, the, the meeting after um, I think um, having said that then Stuart are you pressing your motion to defer yes yeah um, okay. yeah that's yes chair and um, no meeting after next I think it's quite reasonable okay thank you All right, chair, well, we... chair can I just be clear um, what yeah. the what the grounds are for the motion. I know there's a motion to defer, but can I be clear what the grounds are and also clear? You said it's been seconded. I'm not clear who seconded it. Sorry, I'll bring in the seconder again. I think it might have just been typed into the chat. Uh, who was seconding that, uh, that motion? Uh, I, I was trying to chair. Okay. No, right, I, think, <laughs> I think others are joining in as well, but uh, yeah, well, I tried. Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll tell you. I see Brian, Brian Kelly's written in the in the chat again. So for the avoidance of doubt, the two people that were on the screen, Stuart Whittingham to move, and um, uh, Leslie Rennie to um, to second. In terms of the precise terms, um, I think Stuart had put it up earlier in the chat. Um, uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Um, where, where he says, uh, agenda item five to be deferred to allow for further consultation with residents and ward councillors to take place. Um, my is suspicion that, is... Sorry, sorry, Chair. Is that for further consultation with residents and ward councillors to take place through the applicant, not the local planning authority? Because, as I say, we've already done that. Yeah, I, th I, 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 th I think what they're, what, what they're asking for is... Um, for further consultation, probably with the local plan authority and the um, uh, and the applicant uh, to what Stuart to 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 ensure that um, alternative sites that may have been raised by objectors have been considered. Chair, 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 just give me one second. I'll, I'll just uh, I'll, just, I'll just slightly amend the text just to okay. clear up any so, any. So it's clear. Yeah. I think the advice we've had, Stuart, is that you can't mandate the applicants, but obviously you can ask our officers to do something. How's that? I'm, st I'm still unclear who he's asking for the uh, the consultation to take place between. Uh, it's, it's too loud, so I'm not, not ask, I'm not asking for consultation to take place. I'm, I'm, I'm de asking to be deferred to allow, um, you know, so that allow for further consultation between the applicants, residents, and ward councillors. 
I can I can I be clear? Is the, is the motion? Can I suggest to defer to give the applicant the opportunity to consider consultation with the public? Yeah, absolutely. So so there's no nowhere in my text where I'm man, trying to mandate anyone to consult. Right. So but so it, it, uh, so so I'm, I was very careful. Uh, the gender is to be deferred for a month to allow the further consultation between the applicant residents and what councillors take place. Okay. And, and obviously, you know, should, you know, should the applicant you know, decide not to yeah. take advantage of that, then, then obviously, you know, it's, uh, it's they look out really, isn't no, it? Well, can I just be clear when you say that, Councillor Whittingham, there is yeah. no obligation no, on no. the so, I'm just saying to, to, to allow carry out consultation with members of the public yeah, on this matter. To, so it's, it's very clear in the word that the agenda is supposed to be deferred for a month to allow. So, so there's no mandation to anyone to consult. You know, and, and it, it's, it's up to you know, the applicants to take the opportunity. Right, okay. Well, uh, Leslie, come on, get back in then. Yes, yeah, so, sorry. I mean, these, these waters are getting extremely uh, muddy, really. Um, could we perhaps just say to be deferred for a month to al allow the applicant to consider consultation with residents and ward councillors? Because um, as far as um, I, I'm told um, by clearly um, my, my colleague who's been in touch with residents, they haven't actually had any consultation at all. So perhaps rather than say um, defer for a month to allow for further consultation, if it could be um, for if a short deferment to allow the applicant to consider um, a consultation with residents and ward councillors. I'm happy to say, take that as a friendly amendment if, uh, if that's allowable uh, from the legal team. Okay. Yeah, I think, I think that that's... <laughs> That is a, a better motion. Um, I, I still have to reiterate that there is no legal requirement for them to carry out any any consultation whatsoever. But um, it, it, we're now asking them to consider whether to carry out consultation. So we can, you know, go ahead with that motion. Okay. Okay, any further, any further comments on the motion to defer then? We can... Uh, I don't need to type out again, do I? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me... Uh, okay, let's uh, let's go to the vote. The vote seeing will be four gates for abstaining uh, on the motion. The solicitor will call your name. Please turn on your camera mic and say who you are before voting. Members should only cast a vote if they've heard the, the, the debate. There's no, there's no debate. Yeah, if the, the debate, debate is, is, this, yes. yes, including the legal advice um, uh, presented. Um, in the event you've not, you have had problems hearing the uh, discussion and advice, you should not vote and indicate not voting when called. Yes. So I'll ask the sister to conduct the vote. Right. So I can just be clear that this is a, a, a um, vote on the motion to defer this matter. So, Councillor Bruce Berry? I'm voting for. Right, thank you. Councillor Corkill? I'm voting, I'm voting for. Councillor Davis? I'm voting for. Councillor Frost? Voting for. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Hayes? I would vote against. Thank you. Councillor Hodgson. Um, I've heard the, um, the discussion I'm voting for. Right, Councillor Jordan. Councillor Jordan. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to unmute. It's very difficult. Uh, yes, I've heard the discussion and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Kelly. Uh, Sue Kelly had the discussion, voted against. Right, thank you. Councillor Kenny. Councillor Brian Kenny, I've heard the discussion and I'm voting for. 
Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Venny. <laughs> yes, I certainly had the discussion I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Stewart, I had the discussion and I'm voting for. Thank you. Councillor Whittingham. Yeah, I've led the discussion, uh, voting for. And Councillor Williams. I've heard the discussion and I'm voting for the motion. Thank you. That's um, 10 votes for the, uh, in the motion to defer and two against. Oh, sorry, one. Sorry, it's. It, so it's nine and... Eleven for two against. Yes. yes. Sorry. <laughs> okay, eleven for two. Eleven two. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, so that motion has uh, uh, passed. Eleven votes to two. That item is deferred. Okay. Uh, so that concludes our agenda for uh, today. Uh, thank members for their attendance and contribution and uh, declare the meeting uh, closed.